Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese and welcome to this episode of the Ellison Education video series. Well, we're going to look today at how to create geometric solids with nothing more than paper and rubber bands. And if you look at the table, I have what the kids would call a soccer ball, but it's really a truncated isosahedron and it uses 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons in order to create this. And then next to it, I have a truncated octahedron and this uses eight hexagons and six squares. Who is going to want to cut all those by hand? I don't think anybody. So if you look at the table, you can see that we have an elastic geometric set. And the set includes three dies that give you all of the shapes, the square, the pentagon, the hexagon, the triangle, and the octagon. And they all have one inch sides, which means that you can use these to make one shape and then take them apart and use them to make a completely different shape because all of the sides will align. And Let's, I think maybe the easiest way for you to see that is for me to actually make one. Now I'm going to make a three-dimensional cube. And so I've cut out six of the squares. And the first thing I do is I fold on the perforations on the die. And you're going to want to do that on each of them. I'm using number 10 size rubber bands, which one box has a ton of rubber bands. But if all your students are going to be making shapes, you're going to need a ton of rubber bands. So it's good to have them. All I need to do is attach each one with a rubber band. Now, if you have your students looking through a book at a picture of a three-dimensional cube, and you ask them, how many sides does that cube have? They're likely to say three or four. But if your students have the opportunity to put a three-dimensional cube together like this, they are going to likely remember that they had six of these in order to create this cube. And what's really cool, notice that I'm using cardstock that's been laminated. It adds extra durability. So if your kids actually want to keep each of the shapes that they're making, then I think it's kind of helpful for the shapes to be cut out of laminated cardstock because then they're really sturdy and they're going to stay together. The only exception is when I made the soccer ball, because it was so large, and the lamination was slippery. It was a little more difficult for me to put together when it was laminated. It was easier. In fact, if I bring this over and show you, this one is cardstock that's unlaminated. And it actually, I think that this is going to be plenty solid and stay together nicely as well. This one is made with laminated cardstock, and that worked great as well. Before they pu I put the last one in, imagine the exercises you could do with the kids where they would, if you're looking at, for instance, volume, and you want to compare it with perimeter or with area, filling this three-dimensional cube with rice is a good way for them to understand the difference between volume and perimeter and area. So if I go ahead and use my rubber bands to attach the final square, you can see that it really is pretty darn easy to put this three-dimensional cube together. Now notice that I use rubber bands. If you're a little concerned with your students about them wanting to use the rubber bands to shoot across the room, I went ahead and I checked to see it's just as easy to put any of these together with glue. And then you don't have that issue. The only thing is, is it now can't be dismantled in order to use the same shapes to make something else. You know, when your students actually make these three-dimensional geometric solids, they're going to get a much deeper understanding of each shape, and they'll understand the difference between perimeter and area and volume way more than if they were just looking at pictures.